Britney, before you go, there's... <laughs> this is like one of the best pop songs ever written, like, come on. Nine. Ugh. Perfection. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a music producer and a songwriter. And today I'm going to be reacting to Oops, I Did It Again, the full album. So let's go. Right, it is a very hot day today, but I've got to do this recording, so we're going to go for it. I might have to take a few breaks, <laughs> but uh, yes, we'll see. Anyway, hello. I've finally made it back to Britney. Um, sorry it's been a massive uh, Britney hiatus on the channel. I did my Britney discovery video like a few months ago and then like I got very distracted by all this experimental stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, but I've decided to go back to Britney because I really, really enjoyed the first video that I did and a whole bunch of you like really wanted me to do more Britney reactions. Um, and so I thought I would dive into at least the holy trinity of albums and we'll see how we get on and maybe then I'll do some of the others if you guys are interested. But yeah, I figured let's start with Oops, I Did It Again, which is probably like her biggest success, I think. And yeah, I'll definitely do In The Zone, I'll definitely do Glory. But yeah, if there's any other particular albums that you think I should do for Britney, then make sure to let me know. Obviously, my knowledge of Britney is very much the pop knowledge from my last video I've now discovered one song from each of her albums so yeah my knowledge of Britney is like still fairly like mainstream so I'm excited to like really dig into and kind of get to know like an artist who a lot of people underappreciate but before we get started make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to like this video too if you like it as well also if you want to support me extra like you can do via patreon there are many different tiers on there now ranging from a pound all the way up to uh, requesting a full album. There's a broad range of, range of ways in which you can support me. You can get lots of different things like um, getting access to my videos early, getting access to my videos completely unedited, um, so you get the full song, you can request reactions from me. Yeah, so there's all sorts of different ways in which you can support me in the channel. And yeah, the link is in the description for the Patreon if you would like to do so. Cool. Okay, let's get on to this. It is hot, my back is sweating already. Okay, what am I doing? Oh yeah. Let's start at the very beginning. This is Oops, I Did It Again. Obviously, I've heard this, but I've never really just like dug into it. So let's do that now. Yeah. That's <laughs> Britney, bitch. Oh, this is like, honestly, oh God, it's so good, isn't it? <laughs> I think I did it again. <laughs> We're more than just friends. The thing is that it's like, not only is it really slick, but it's also quite like musically interesting, you know? It's not typically me. <laughs> it's not like in a typical, you know, key signature or whatever. Oh baby, baby, from my bar, not that innocent. I think the thing that really sells Britney's early stuff particularly is like the way that she delivers the vocals. It's so unique to her, so powerful, so rhythmic. Oh baby, baby, oops. I love this bit. Yeah, to use like a real big, like major moment in the middle of a, like a quite a minor song. Yeah, I love it. It's kind of like this kind of soaring feel, you know. Before you go, there's something I want you to have. What's this bit? Album version. <laughs> Titanic. Oops, I did it. I had no idea that that Titanic reference was just in the middle of the album version. What? <laughs> oh, baby. Oops, you. So good. And this last version of the chorus is really cool. It's different, isn't it? A slightly maneuvered version of the chorus. It's very cool. Oh, baby, baby. This is such a good song. Like, it's madness how good the song is. As much as Hit Me Baby One More Time was like iconic, I feel like this was the song that was like, pulled it all together. Yes. Oh, looking great. So good, I'm obsessed. Yeah, shit. It's like such a classic, even to this day. Like, it's one of those songs that's been played to death and yet it still feels fresh. The production still feels like really snappy and really tight and really, like obviously it's of its era, with like the orchestra hits and stuff, but unlike other kind of late 90s pop, they sound like a relic of the past, but this song doesn't. It still feels 
current and I think that like yeah it's a testament to like the real creativity used I think musically it's super super catchy but isn't by the numbers I think that's what keeps it kind of sounding fresh you know because it's not copying like a style it is the style and it is doing things musically that are, that are still that are kind of engaging compared to like even now still compared to your standard kind of pop song you know and I suppose it represents a little bit of like a bit of a growing up let's have a look at the lyrics yeah I could do that so many times <laughs> Yeah, so, like, she kind of got lost in the game of, like, love. But actually what she's saying is, like, people are idolising her in a way that's not realistic. Obviously, this is the second album, right? So after the first album, she's maybe looking at all these people and thinking, they're idolising me, saying that I'm sent from above, that I'm this perfect creature, but I'm not that innocent. I'm actually kind of a normal person. But it's almost like it's put on her that she is, you know, responsible for these people falling in love with her. I mean, she's responsible for breaking their heart. And she's kind of writing this song kind of almost like, you've put me on a pedestal and ultimately that's your fault for doing so, you know? Also, no idea that there was this like little romantic interlude about the, uh, with the reference to Titanic and the guy swimming down to the bottom of the ocean to get the thing from the old lady. That's amazing. Like, why did they cut that out of the radio edit? What's going on? <laughs> Okay, let's go on to the second song. This is Stronger Than Yesterday. This is actually probably my favourite Britney song. So, a reaction or just having fun? <laughs> Who is to say? I actually love this because, as with most of my musical upbringing, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, as with most of my musical upbringing, I discovered so much music from Glee. <laughs> and like, they did Britney episodes of Glee. And like, I remember just like falling in love with them, you know? Stronger than yesterday. My loneliness ain't killing me. I, I am stronger. <sighs> But thought that I love how like the verse skips a line and just continues with the sentence. It's great. I love it. <laughs> but you're wrong. It's just such a euphoric chorus. Is it in Mixolydian? There's some kind of modal borrow chord sort of stuff going on here that it's like really gives it such a lift. It might be Lydian. Not sure. One of the modes, I think. And that's what I mean by it being musically interesting, is that it kind of sets itself in a key and then uses borrowed elements to kind of give it these, these like really euphoric lifts in the chorus. On my own, don't need nobody better up alone. I don't need nobody, not anybody. Isn't it so good? Oh my god, and this little turn at chorus thing again. They're so satisfying because you think you know what's gonna go, and it's like a bigger version of what it was before. It's fucking sick. <laughs> Here I go. Stronger than yesterday. Uh, in my way. Oh. <laughs> I'm knocking my mic over. <laughs> oh. This is, oh, this is, oh, <laughs> this is like one of the best pop songs ever written. Like, come on. I'm stronger. Fucking great. Isn't it so good? So good. It's just ridiculous how good that song is. I love it so much. Oh, just, I'm obsessed. And that's another song that has been about since, like, literally my entire life. So I was born in 1992, and this album came out in what, 90? Oh, it came to 2000. My entire childhood had Britney Spears in the background. I was obviously aware of Britney and obviously like knew her big hits, but I, was, I wasn't like a big like fan or anything. So it's really nice to go back and listen to these as an adult and really appreciate the actual like brilliance of them. Because like this song, obviously I remember hearing it in 2000, presumably. And like through my teenage years, you know, we'd have our cheesy house parties and whatever. We go to cheesy club nights and this song would come on and it would be like, everyone would be singing, it'd be, a really great vibe but like now as an adult I have knowledge of music theory I have you know like songwriting experience a production experience and still I can listen to a song like that and just think it's fucking great and it's like I've been listening to it my whole life <laughs> and it's still just 
for like the first time I heard it. So satisfying, so well written, so euphoric. This idea that you were stronger than you were yesterday. You're going to be better. You're going to be like you've you've had like loneliness. You've had dark times, but you're going to push through the clouds and you're going to be stronger and how that's represented in the music that my loneliness ain't killing me anymore goes out into this like you expect it to go to the minor and then it goes to the major i'm not sure maybe it's resolving into the major key i'd have to look up the chords but like there's a euphoric lift there that is unexpected like in the previous song but this one it ties in with the lyric a bit more and it's that moment of breaking through it's like you're rising above the regular chords you're breaking out of the regular chords to break through your loneliness and to be stronger than you were yesterday it is so good <laughs> it's so good and then it has all the other hallmarks of of like the brilliant britney production and the alternate chorus and i think the super satisfying thing about the alternate chorus is that like you think that it's going to go into the main chorus but it doesn't the melody on the normal choruses starts on the beat it's stronger than yesterday it's building you know it's going to go into a big chorus moment but instead of going stronger it goes stronger than yesterday the melody's higher it starts a beat later so you're waiting for it and then when it comes in it's so so satisfying and it just it's like reminiscent of the chorus but is so much more satisfying because you don't expect it it's just fucking great so so well written yeah i love it amazing something that i like to use as my own songwriting doing alternate choruses um <laughs> if you want to check out my music you can do the link is in the description <laughs> god i'm gone on a tangent about stronger but it's one of my favorite songs ever so many people who are into produ production songwriting can be a bit quite precious about pop music but like for me like when pop is done correctly and surprisingly that is just the absolute like top tier for me of music it's like you're taking the the kind of pop tropes the snappy production all that kind of side of the catchy thing but then you're undercutting my expectations that is the creme de la creme of music that's like exactly where i'm at rena sawayama if you're not on the rena sawayama train that you 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 need to be on it i'm so excited for a new album my reactions will be out on the day but first day right we need to move on from why stronger is the best song of all time um <laughs> let's go on to the next song this is song number three this is don't go knocking at my door don't go knock my door Ooh, cool i love this like Highly produced acoustic guitar is quite cool. This is a little bit more of a stilted rhythm, which is quite cool. So I love the feeling of empowerment that we've had from everything so far. Yeah, stay away. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Oh, fucking great. Oh, I love that. <laughs> nice. So she's like trying to tell herself that she's gonna be okay. But it's almost like this guy keeps on coming back and she's like, oh. <laughs> this could be the dance routine. Maybe it should be this. <laughs> No one should employ me as a, as a, uh, I was gonna say songwriter, no please, <laughs> as a choreographer, lol. <laughs> mm, yeah. That's almost like a harpsichord, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds like medieval. Strange. As long as you don't come down. Nice. This is sick. This has some really great, cool, like, little production flares and composition. Quite heavy on the orchestral hits. <laughs> but it is 2000. Okay, okay, so listen, listen. So then he goes. Hi. It never seems to be enough. Ew. I can't believe he said that. Ew. <laughs> you are. What? Don't tell me you agree with him. Fine, the next minute you're freaking out. It's like you're never satisfied. Well, I know I'm a little picky, but hey, I just know what I want. Oh, let's go into the next song. Oh my god, you fing like. <laughs> That's genius. Oh my giddy art. That is so genius. Oh, 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 oh. oh. wow. 
that is so good oh my god to like take it properly to like teen movie to be like, oh my god girl she is like he just said all this shit about me <laughs> I love that like, conversation like then fades into the next song that's just ridiculous oh my god as if as if Britney Spears was doing this this is the thing is that like the main kind of perception of Britney right is that she is the pop star and I think that like unfortunately the way in which a lot of successful big pop acts are viewed is that they don't is that they kind of are by the numbers that they're overproduced that they're you know being controlled by management teams and although there is a lot of that in the industry and there is and I'm sure that like her producers like Max Martin in particular I know that he had a big part in the production of her early songs I think unfortunately because of that connotation people underestimate and I underestimate artists like Britney and you kind of don't necessarily think of them as album artists you know but like this proves that she's thinking about it you know she's thinking about the way in which the album the songs go from one to another she's thinking that people are going to stick the cd in their car and listen to it the whole way through you know and she's playing with it she's being creative and she's actually referencing this kind of like her brand her character of this like teenage girl and she's referencing all of the uh, like teen movies of the time you know very much that vibe there's so much more there than people give her credit for i love it and this is so f***ing clever i love it i can't believe i've never listened to this album the whole way through it's actually insane we're like so bye bye <laughs> She sounds like a teenager in the song. So, like, she's realising that, like, the relationship she had was, like, not good for her. And now she's learning to be happy away from this person. And actually thinking, you know, I'm stronger, I've moved on, I'm better than than what we were together. So, please, stay away. You're saying that you, that, 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 that you miss me, but actually you just want my attention. And I don't need that in my life, so back off. Don't go knocking on my door. Okay, let's go on to song number four. This is the cover. I can't get no satisfaction. I can't get no yeah. Satisfaction. No. It's pretty strange her doing the cover of this particular song. It kind of almost like changes the meaning of the song, you know? I like how she's kind of reframing it almost like in a kind of slightly more feminist way. It's quite interesting. It's about being told what you should be by the man, by society, and actually be able to break free of that. Yeah. I don't know what the original lyrics are, but this is different, isn't it? I'm not as inspired by the, by the production in this one. Yeah. She, she shouldn't be able to tell me who I who I'm allowed to be. I can wear whatever I want. I can be whoever I want to be. It's kind of like really the beginning of this era of like that kind of culminated with stuff like Born This Way, you know, about being yourself and throwing off expectations of you, often linked to gender, you know. change. Yeah, this was definitely a bit repetitive and the melody isn't quite as interesting, but I do like how she's reframing the song, you know. What's the original song about? It's about sex. Oh yeah. So it's similar, she's just changed a few bits, but I love how it's kind of reframing it for the young girl and actually like when you actually think about the way in which there was this kind of like girl power revolution going on at the time. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, like, when you kind of think about, yeah, the kind of girl power revolution that was, like, with Britney, but also with Spice Girls, it kind of was the beginning of this era of change for our generation, where suddenly we were being told that we didn't have to fit into a box, that we didn't have to prescribe to typical versions of femininity, that we could be, you know, who we wanted to be. And like for like our entire generation, we were getting this messaging from, yeah, like Spice Girls, from Britney. 
and and then from Gaga, you know, I think it kind of like signals such an important kind of moment in cultural history. Um, and I think is one of the kind of big differences between our generation and how we identify and our parents. And Britney was like a massive part of that. I remember like most of the chat about Britney at the time was like that, you know, should she be a pop star should she be this bad example for young girls wearing short skirts and whatever and she was just like actually no I'm just going to be who I want to be but like so much of the of, of the conversation was almost like this oppressive version of what femininity should be and like our generation fighting against that and being whatever we want to be you know so that song actually and actually reframing it because obviously like the rolling stones version was 60s um so to then reframe it like 40 years later 30 40 30 ish years later whatever i think is very clever because it's like taking something that was like about like you know i guess like maybe almost like a working class kind of vibe about like like men feeling oppressed within their society and updating it to you know actually representing young girls and gays <laughs> um very cool let's go on to the next one don't let me be the last to know oh nice oh see what i mean about like interesting musical choices very cool nice <laughs> the synths are pretty hard like that era but it's cool but, I need to hear it. but it's kind of becoming current again you know with rena particularly Been waiting for so long. oh oh love it Not sure about that particular synth, but I love the songwriting here. Mm. Bit foreboding, isn't it? It's like the guy's preparing to dump her. She can sense it. She's like, I need you to tell me. Because I don't want to be the last person to find out about this. Yeah, shit. Especially if he's sleeping with someone else and that's kind of, I'm sure the gossip is already going around, you know. Nice! That was a cool key change. Yeah, the music and composition dis decisions on this album are f***ing great. But like, it's still really poppy, yeah, like, amazing. Oh. Ooh. The last to know. <laughs> it's still catchy though, isn't it? Like, this is so cool. It's so creative. I love it. It's great. So, baby, if you love me, oh. let me be the last to know. Oh, vocals. Amazing. Really good. Again, phenomenal, like, music choices. I think what you'd expect from a big pop star is, like, in terms of composition, is diatonic harmony. So that means, like, you have your key of C particularly, which is all the white notes, and you have the chords that are made up of all those white notes and you don't use anything else. But like what Britney is doing is rather than just using the white notes, she's using some of the black notes, but in very specific moments to give it a real strong sense of like, in this one it had like a real foreboding thing. And I think the point was that she was like, you know, with her boyfriend and she has this feeling of foreboding. She's thinking, this guy is cheating on me. This guy's with somebody else. And I know it, but he hasn't told me. So it's that fear. And like, I think that's a very purposeful thing to have that bass come in, the, in that really dissonant thing. The bit where I'm like this, that, <laughs> that note, that borrowed, uh, borrowed chord is representing that feeling of foreboding and it's so 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 clever and something that isn't really done in pop music enough i think especially like bieber era pop for me like that kind of level of like pop music is hugely 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 broad you know rena sawayama's pop lord is pop gaga's pop adela's pop and they all do some things completely differently and they all don't use they all like break out of diatonic harmony um but like in terms of like the upper echelons of like popularity when you think about you know the stuff that's on the radio like a lot of the hip-hop inspired stuff Ed Sheeran and stuff 
they stick within their diatonic harmony 100% of the time. They And they actually even stick to like the simplest musical loops you can even have. And I, my approach to pop music personally is there needs to be a balance between recognisable pop things. So whether that's, you know, a, like a recognisable structure, recognisable harmony, recognisable hook, moments that are, people, that are easy for people to listen to. But if you make it all the basic, then it becomes basic. Does that make sense? Whereas if you like take one of those elements, like the harmony, and use borrowed chords to make it more interesting, but then you keep the other other elements pretty pop-y, you suddenly have this like really, really cool balance. And that's where the magic is for me. And that's what like my favourite songs from these particular artists as well are ones that that have that balance of recognisable pop but also something extra, something that makes me go, ooh, you know, makes it memorable and actually tells me the story in a more convincing way. Yeah, anyway, that's my lecture on how to write a pop song. <laughs> Again, if you want to catch out any of my pop songs, you can do the link is in the description. <laughs> I think the production on that one is a little bit more of its time, like that synth, Oof. but like, yeah, in terms of the songwriting, it's mega, it's great. So this is song number six. This is what you see is what you get. Okay, so more about what people think about her, you know? Yeah, take me for as I am, you know. Yeah, nice. I really like the message of this whole album is this sense of strength of self, you know. Yeah. Do you feel like this one maybe needs something else production wise to set it apart a bit, you know? Yeah. Maybe this is like looking towards like her critics in the industry kind of saying, you know, you need to change what you look like, you need to change how you act. But like, I have to be myself, you know, there's no other way for me to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, we've got another phone call. Hey, what's up? This is Brit, so do your thing. Beep. <gasps> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're a nerd. <gasps> you really need to change that message. Thinking about that movie we saw the other night. Oh my god. Storyline. She still wasn't happy. Ah. Uh. Wouldn't that make a cool song? Oh, here we go. Okay. I love that. We've got an ongoing, like, this is a concept album, guys. We've <laughs> I love her, like, stupid, naughties, answer phone message, classic. <laughs> Takes me right back, lol. And I'm gonna assume that that's what the next song is about. Yeah, I like that one. I think, like, in terms of, like, um, it's not as strong as some of the other songs on the album that kind of do a similar thing. Um, but I like the message of it, certainly. You know, what you see is what you get. You can't change me. I'm going to be who I'm going to be. And actually, yeah, like, at least I'm being honest with myself. What you see is what you get. I'm being honestly, I'm honestly reflecting how I feel inside. And that should be something to be supported, not something to be changed, you know? And again, like, so that links into that message of this kind of self-expression kind of message that, that this is beginning, you know? Yeah, a seminal pop album. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is Lucky. I feel like this is a very popular one, but I'm not sure whether I've heard it. Might have done. I'll probably get halfway through it and be like, oh. This is a story about a girl named Lucky. <laughs> she wakes up. It's time for makeup. Perfect smile. Yeah. Oh, I think I have this one, yeah. She's so lucky. They say that she's so lucky. Yeah. This is kind of her, like, revealing a bit of herself, isn't it, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing missing in my life, then why do these tears come at night? She's just a real person underneath it all. <laughs> but when the lights go down, when I go off the stage, like, what happens, you know? She's a starling. 
Oh yeah, nice. I don't know this well, but yeah, like, I've definitely heard it. Lucky! And it's like, she's like, oh yeah, this is a song about somebody else. It's about her, let's be honest. Like. Oh, perfect key change. I think there is a little bit of an over-reliance on the, on the orchestral uh, hits, just saying. <laughs> I love this actually, this is really good. Why do that that melody bit is really beautiful. Oh just throw that chord in every other chorus, it's very good. Oh, perfection. Such a good song. That melody is just really up there. Like, isn't it so great? She's so lucky, she's a star, but she cries, cries, cries at the lonely part again. It's that, it's again, it's that like breaking out of the established chorus moment to kind of have this like big moment that is like the key point of the, of the emotional crux of the song. You know, why do these tears come at night? It's like so so nice to kind of like have this melody that just goes oh it's oh, beautiful love it and it's like similar to like stronger in that sense i must say that a lot of these songs have very kind of similar form factor you know within like and a lot of them rely on this orchestral hit um so there is a bit of that and i think that like if i were her producer i would tweak it so that each song had something slightly more honestly if you just didn't use the orchestral hits and did something else it wouldn't necessarily read as like quite so similar every time but like yeah like there's no denying how well that song is written and i love the message of it it kind of really gives this like a bit more of a personal story of britney you know of like and actually a bit of foreshadowing you know because she if she's so lucky that she's a star then then why when she's she's on her own is she crying you know and i think you know this ends up being the ultimate story of britney spears doesn't it unfortunately despite all this success and fame and this like perceived notion of success she has gone through it she's had a very very public mental breakdown which was awful and then to be like put in this conservatorship thing betrayed by her family and kept like away from like being able to not control her own life for so long it's like she was foreshadowing the reality of her fame at the height of her fame she was foreshadowing that future you know and it's kind of like to listen to like make see those realizations now is really sad but it is so beautiful that she has finally made it out and that the reports are that she's making new music with Elton John, <laughs> which is an interesting, didn't quite expect that as a collab, but we'll go with it. And I'm interested and excited to hear what she's going to do next now that she's finally, you know, out of all of that. And she can have a bit more of a control and a bit more freedom over her career and her life, you know. Yeah, not so lucky. Hey, let's go on to the next one. Um, this is One Kiss From You. Nice. Another orchestra here. <laughs> wiki, 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 woo. There's a lot of people telling her that she shouldn't be the way she wants to be, you know. Nice. Nice. Ah, oh, proper romantic love song. From you. Nice. Oh, so well written that. I really like this one actually. Really feels like that kind of teenage love song, doesn't it? Like one kiss from you and I can see my whole future stretched out ahead of me. Oh, I love how that sung as well. I love this. Like bringing back around the lyric, the, the main hook, and the title of the song. Slightly different perspective, nicely written. I love this. The melody's lush in this one. Oh, 
Oh, interesting way to end it. I really love that one. I love the lyric. I thought the lyric was super, super, super clever. She already says the hook of the song. You know, she says, one kiss from you and the and the world is, you know, the my future's paved out in front of me. And you think that that's kind of like what the, you know, the main hook is. And I think a lot of pop songwriters might be tempted to then repeat that hook for exactly what it is. But instead, she kind of does this like fake out end of the four bars, repeats a section and then turns it back on its head. I don't know what I would do without One Kiss From You. It just ends up giving you this really satisfying turnaround of recontextualizing that hook, you know, melodically, love it. Again, I like that. these orchestral hits, are like, <laughs> I'm getting tired of them. <laughs> Because the thing is, it's like Max Martin's friggin' production, like all over like everything at that point in the 90s and early noughties. And he just uses it again and again and again and again and again. It's like, come on, like there's other sounds out there. But I mean, he does, that is the dominant sound of the late 90s. So, you know, maybe that was what he was going for, but it's a lot. Um, <laughs> bang, bang. Mm, yeah. Love that. Really romantic as well. It has a little more, more hope in her romance, whereas like the other ones are a little bit more like, you know, independent self-affirmation when someone's did her, done her wrong. So it's nice to see like her having a nice romantic moment. Um, let's go on to the next one. This is Where Are You Now? Calling out your name. Mm, ballad. It's quite Whitney already, isn't it? <laughs> wake up every night. Never see Very hints of boy to men, boys to men as well. Boy band love song, innit? But with Britney. Ooh, nice, there you go. <laughs> mm, love that. Ooh, that's the minor fourth, innit? Four chord. I love that. <laughs> this is such a song of its time. So sad. She's like she stood on the pier looking for her lost love with the dress blowing behind her like, Where is he now? Is he thinking of me? I love it. <laughs> can, you, can you tell that I've put myself in that position? Myself on the pier looking for my long lost love. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Her heart when I, she doesn't trust him, does she? So I can let you go. Oh, thinking about like the person that left her and that she needs to let go of him. That was a subtle key change there, quite nice. Time to let you go. Letting go, love it. Oh, it's very never had a dream come true, isn't it? Oh my god, I can't believe I didn't make that connection. Oh, and key change too. Vocals AF. Oh, very good. That last chorus is so good. Love that. That was the thing, I was an S Club 7 kid. That was my obsession at this point in time. And their songs are still great. I, go back, I went back and listened to a bunch of their old songs recently and was like, yeah, they still hold up. And it's probably just nostalgia talking, but there you go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, S Club 7 was like my like number one, like first like big fan moment. Like when I was like, eight or nine, I guess. We went to Wembley to see uh, S Cup 7 live at Wembley, and it was great. <laughs> Where are you now? Yeah, that reminds me, never had a dream come true. I never had a dream come true, even though I pretend it. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's all very much that same late 90s, early noughties, like boy band ballad kind of. It is very boys to men, isn't it? The, the tempo, the production, the kind of melody stuff. But Britney, of course, puts her own spin on it with some really interesting musical choices. Again, with the choice of using the minor fourth chord, which is, gives it that like nostalgic, sad thing. Such a nice chord to use as a, as a borrowed chord. And some other kind of more foreboding moments, like right, right before the chorus and stuff. And the like 
subtle key change into the guitar solo with the second key change into the final chorus was actually really cool, very nicely done. Yeah. They say that key changes are cheesy, and they can be, but I think if they're done well and they fit the song, they're great. I love a key change. When I'm messing about with keys, I tend to make my key changes less noticeable. Oh, well, there's one song where I did like four key changes in one song, but that was like to suit the mood of this. That was the point of the song. But like, yeah, I tend to kind of like gently fluctuate between different key centers. That's kind of my attitude. Cause I think it always keeps people guessing. Anyway, let's go on to the next song. This is Can't Make You Love Me, which was the one I did in my uh, Britney discovery. But let's hear it as part of context of the album. And I'll get a little bit more of an idea of where she's coming from with it. I'm just a girl with a crush on you. <clears throat> oh my God, these orchestral hits, like, come on. <laughs> so tell me Nice, yeah. You love me. It seems to be this this kind of tandem storyline of her finding herself individually, but also kind of getting over this guy, her first love, maybe. You know, it's very kind of that kind of teenage story, coming of age story, isn't it? And this is like a real realization, isn't it? You know. into the descending thing to the chorus, it's very cool. With the crush on you. <laughs> mm. Nice. Cool. I don't remember this section. Close to you. Close to you. Uh, it's more of this idea of that she should be happy with her, like, uh, pop style lifestyle you know you let's set the camera I may have got a little bit distracted with the fan on so she still really likes this person and she would trade everything for this person you know and like but she can't make you love me and she has this like realization where she's like you know I can't make it happen um, I think I'm just gonna have to, you know, give it up, really. Nice. I really like it. It is a good song. And it's like, it feels like it's a continuation of this story of her, like, growing up, really, and kind of realising that, like, actually maybe these, like, loves when you're that young aren't supposed to, you know, last forever. Um, and that's okay. And she's having these kind of realisations for the first time with this relationship and kind of thinking, actually, you know, I can't make this happen. I think I'm just gonna have to you know, accept what it is. Let's go to the penultimate song. This is When Your Eyes Say It. Ooh, this time with a big 80s synth. I love to hear you say. Interesting. You tell me everything. You just one whisper, you tell me everything. When your eyes say it. Okay, so this per maybe the person's come back. I love all the ways that you show me. I love these spoken word bits. Oh, that guitar's great. Your feelings run so deep. Wow, I love this guitar. Maybe this is someone different. Oh, it's a cello. Oh, key change. <laughs> There's a lot of trust that, that, like, just by looking into somebody eye, somebody's eyes and saying, I can see that you care for me, you know. It's, one of the, it's a very kind of teenage feeling, isn't it, you know. Interesting production on that one. 
Like the string sound is quite, punches through quite a lot, doesn't it? Okay, we're going. He was so sweet. He took me to eat. He bought me roses. You went back to his house? Did you guys kiss? <gasps> oh. oh my God. It's literally <gasps> team rom-com. Be quiet. Don't be cool. Go talk to him. No. What would I say? <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love these little, like, kind of team movie interludes. It really does. It makes it feel like it's the album of, you know, something like, you know, I was going to say not another team movie, but that's not, that's not the point. That's like a piss take of the regular team movie. It's so cool, actually. And, like, again, like, really different and not something you'd expect from a kind of mainstream pop album. I, uh, yeah, that one, I, yeah, the song... Um, didn't strike me quite as much as some of the others. Um, it was a little bit more down tempo. Um, at least it didn't have any orchestral hits. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily kind of fit with the the moving on from the guy who's wronged her situation. Um, unless she's talking about friends or like somebody who that really does support her. I'm not sure. Well, before we go into the final song, if you like this video and you haven't already yet subscribed, then what are you doing? You're obviously like, you're very close to the end. I think you must be liking the video. So subscribe to the channel. Boop. And yep, yeah, if you want to support me even further, you can do on Patreon in a variety of different ways and you can get a variety of benefits by doing so. Check it all out. All the details are link in the description. And if you also want to support me, then you can listen to my music. This might be a new song out by now. Maybe. Actually, no, I don't think it's going to be out yet. Anyway, whatever. It, you'll hear it soon. Um, cool. Let's do it. Let's go on to the final song. This is Dear Diary. Mm. There's a hero. <laughs> Today I saw a boy <gasps> took my breath away. <gasps> really similar to Hero, isn't it? <laughs> Apart from in the other songs. <laughs> this is like the epitome of teenage girl song. <laughs> God, I can imagine like 13 year old girls dying for this song. And boys, obviously. <laughs> Ooh, beautiful vocals there. Her voice is really nice on this, to show off a little bit more of what her voice can do. So much more. Oh, hopeful. It feels like this song's are the wrong way round. Do you know what I mean? That's so Disney, oh my god. <laughs> oh, really good. Oh my god. Classic. Oh. Uh, uh, my Spotify just knows. Um, Dear Diary. <laughs> it's like totally classic like teenager crying in their diary about this person that they love um kind of song i do think that like these songs should have been switched around in terms of their topic maybe not necessarily in terms of like how the songs flow but it felt like she was like i'm moving on i'm stronger i'm not gonna make those mistakes again and then the last song is like this is the first time that I've fallen in love. Do you know what I mean? Um, it feels like that should have been earlier on. I mean, it wouldn't necessarily have been a very, like, big kind of, you know, spectacular opening to the album. But, like, do you know what I mean? Like, in terms of the storyline, it, it's all, all a bit misma mismatched. That song does really tell you exactly what the target audience was in, in this uh, era. And I love that the, that the whole album kind of has this sense of it being like a teen movie, you know, that kind of classic of the era that that me and all my friends like grew up watching to the point where it's like even got the bits where she's like, you know, talking on the phone to her friend, gossiping about a boy in the playground and there's a boy coming over. Oh, my God, the boy ringing her and there being a, like a cheeky answer for a message, you know, all that kind of stuff really kind of sets it almost like within that kind of movie world in a sense. Then the other side of the album is actually like this real kind of independent like finding myself growing up kind of journey so it does buck that kind of you know the trend of those movies which were all about kind of you know you fall in love at the end whatever yeah which is quite interesting so it's like a little bit of a tale of two halves but it does all work together definitely yeah oh so good like <laughs> i think that like yeah like whenever i tell people oh yeah like doing britney on the channel like a few people were like oh okay why but like 
I think if they were to watch these videos, they realise that actually there's so much more to Britney than people think. Um, and this is kind of what I came from, what I kind of took away from my first video as well, is that there's a lot going on musically that is actually really, 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 really well done. And lyrically as well, and the production is a little bit heavy on the orchestra hits, but like still super catchy, super, super, super nicely produced stuff. And the album still has loads of fun surprises, like all the little like spoken moments and all of that. It's like really clever and creative and like super fun and like super satisfying to listen to and unexpected. It's fab. I really, yeah, really love it. Yeah, very good. Oh my God. You have to let me know what the next album I should do should be. I was thinking In The Zone. Cause you're toxic. That's kind of the era of Britney that I remember the most is like toxic vibes. But yeah, let me know which one I should do next. Um, and also make sure if you are a fan of this kind of music, then make sure to keep an eye on my channel for my Rina Sawayama reaction. If you haven't listened to Rina Sawayama yet and you're a Britney fan, then what are you doing? She is incredible. She's one of the best new artists coming up and I'll be reacting to her new album in a couple of weeks. So make sure to come back for the channel for that. Before we sign off, a big thank you to my patrons who are supporting the channel. Their names are all coming up on screen now. Those guys pledged to my channel to support me in my journey of being a freelance singer-songwriter, creative person thing. My job title is very mixed at this point. Yeah, th those guys are really supporting me. And if you want to support me as well, then you can do. There's a variety of ways in which you can do that through Patreon. The link is in the description. And you can get your name on here as well. Thank you for tuning in for another video. Make sure to keep an eye for, yeah, my other Britney videos. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Stronger than yesterday.